Alright. DJ, thanks, brother, for pointing hard out. God, I just, uh, we are so grateful for your spirit being here tonight. God, I, I sense your presence, Lord. I pray for lives. God, there's people here that are living in sin, struggling with those chains that have bound them for years, God. I just pray tonight that you'll loose those chains. God, I pray that in, in my life right now, God, that you'll just loose me and let me go like Lazarus. God, that I'll be able to share your gospel. Lord, what you've done for my life, God, and, and it's not just for me. Oh, Lord, it's not for me. I pray that they see that tonight, God. My heart's burdened tonight, Lord. For people here that are Christians that are playing games, and for people that are lost, Lord, going to the devil's hell without you. So, God, I pray tonight that lives will be changed. God, you can only do it. So, God, we're asking you to show up and do what you can do. Save lives tonight, Jesus. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, tonight, I think this message is on my heart, and the title of this is Keeping the Fire Burning. Keeping the Fire Burning. You know, I think, uh, I know my, my journey with my relationship with the Lord, man, it was like this. You know what I mean? I think some of you guys can relate with me, but it was kind of up and down. And, and I'm not saying that it still won't be, but I'm telling you right now that being on fire is where it's at. And having that fire in your belly, that zeal to serve the Lord. You know, the hunger after righteousness. You know, it's, it's awesome. You know, it's one thing that it's really awesome about is I get to hang around other people and I get to choose who I hang around with other people that love Jesus like I do. I mean, that's just awesome. I mean, that is awesome. All of, you, all of you here today are here, I believe, because you're trying to take the next step in your life. Whether you're here, you're lost, you're trying to figure out who He is, who is Jesus? Who is this Jesus you're talking about? Or maybe you're a Christian, you a Christian, maybe even your whole life. And you're like, what's the next step in my life? You know, um, I don't know about you, but I know for me, you know, I was, I was thinking of an illustration, and I'm really not that good at it. Rick's way better at illustrations than I am, but I, I was thinking about it like this. I was thinking about my wife. My wife loves for me to put things together. Man, that's not a good deal when it has instructions with it. I'm just going to tell you, I get to about step two. Or three, and I'm like, you're going to have to find somebody else to do this. I can't do it. I want to kick that box, you know? And, and sometimes I think that you feel like it's like that living the Christian life, you know? You get to step one or step two, and you're like, what's the next step? You know what I mean? What's the, what's the next step? Well, tonight I want, to, I want to share one passage. I want to get into a couple different passages, and then we're going to, we're going to kind of settle in Philippians. But tonight I want to hit this passage that really hit me hard. All right? This is really... It's, it's kind of overwhelming for the last two weeks. I'm just going to be honest with you. Because it's so out there. I'm just going to read it to you, okay? It's in Revelation chapter 3, 16. You don't have to turn there yet. Let me just read it. It says, it says, So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This is God talking. Okay? That's a big time deal. I had to take a self, I had to take a self evaluation of my life. Right then when I read that, I, re I probably heard messages after messages, but it didn't mean that much to me because I hadn't evaluated myself. I said, well, maybe it's that person over there, or maybe it's this person over here. But no, I had to examine my own life. You know, and so I think that's the call tonight is that we've got to examine our own lives tonight. Okay? Examine yourself tonight. This passage, this lukewarmity, you know, uh, as a Christian, let's, let's just talk to Christians real quick. Christians in here. Um, lukewarm. This is going to God Almighty, the, the, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, says, I'm going to vomit you out. Think of that. It has to be so disgusting, and then he throws it up. He throws it up. Man, I heard one preacher say it like this. He said, if you realized, if you took that verse personally, Christian, if you took that verse personally, you would fast till you had an answer. You would get on your knees and you would say, God, I'm staying here until you give me the answer. Non-Christian, this might not make sense to you. And that's okay. Because I'm here to tell you that the reason why this verse is is because Jesus is the answer. He's the fire that I've got in my belly. And He's the fire you can have to do. He's the fire that you can have. Wednesday night, this verse was still in my heavy on my heart, man. It was heavy on me. 
And I've been sharing with everybody I could on my UPS route. Okay, I'm sitting there, I'd, I'd share a little bit. Most of the Christians, you know, but I would share with them and I'd say, what do you think this verse means? And some of them asked some answers. And, you know, I didn't push it. I, didn't, you know, I wasn't the pushy salesman to them. But with, with the men's group, I was pushy. I was serious with it because this is a serious verse. Verse to take account. So this is what they said about this. I asked them this question. What's it look like to be on fire for the Lord? Man, he's got the fire up. Listen to this. Nothing, nothing else matters than pleasing God. Have you been there, Christian? Now listen to this one. This is a good one. You have a drive to serve others. Whew. I mean, like a drive, you're like, what's the next plan? What's the next step? Where am I going next, Lord? Where are you sending me next? What's the next place you want me to be at to help out? Man, I got to thinking about that. You know, there's needs here at Freeway. You know, there's, there's food and stuff. There's bus stuff. There's child care. You know, maybe you've been sitting here forever and you're like, man, I don't know. Hey, listen. Get plugged in. There's some opportunities here for knuckleheads like me. If I'm welcome here, you are. Next one, I, I thought this was awesome too. Uh, you're a bold witness everywhere you go. Not just some places. You know, it's a little uncomfortable at first, isn't it? To be fired up and share the gospel and just go out on the roof. But man, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't get any more comfortable. But it's awesome. I mean, you get home and you're like, the Lord let me have an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody that's going to make a difference for what? Eternity? What? That's incredible. That God will trust us with the gospel. Guys, this Luke woman is serious. Serious call. Now listen to the next one here. You have peace. Oh, oh, oh. This is a good one. And the reason why is because you know what you guys are doing right now? You're searching for peace. That's why you're here. That's why I got the call this. Because I was searching for peace in my life. I couldn't sleep well. I couldn't sleep well at all. I had anxiety issues. Struggling in life. Couldn't keep my marriage together. Couldn't keep nothing together. As a Christian. Right? Have peace. You have peace in your life. What's the next one? You have purpose. Man, isn't that a good one? You have a purpose now. Guess what people would do when they have a purpose? They keep striving for that purpose. They keep going. I mean, dragging their knuckles, fighting for it, taking the wounds, battling. Getting after it, right? You have power over sin. That's the next one. That's a big one. You have power over sin. By faith. And that power can only come from the Lord. Trust in Him. What's the opposite of that, though? Ooh, we got to hit the bad things too, right? Well, it, this was this came out of our ministry. This is this. These are all things out of our ministry. Listen to this: you get high, you quit on everything and everybody, you make excuses for everything, you get in a relationship you shouldn't be in. It's a slow fade back into the world. It's a slow fade. You know, you stop showing up, stop reading your Bible, stop praying. It's a country song backwards, isn't it? Stop doing it. Listen, to keep your fire with God, you must first take time with the Lord. That's my first point. Take time with the Lord. Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8, verse 1. Listen to this. This is just a great. If you guys want life first, chew on this one for a minute or two. O Lord of Lords, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Who has set your glory above the heavens? And think of that. O Lord of Lords, how majestic is your name. You gotta take time with the holy God. Christian person. If you're saved, you say you're saved, you gotta take time. What consumes your time? Alright. Do you have that place that's special to you? Do you spend time with the Lord? Our pastor a while back said, I remember this. When I first started my relationship with the Lord, I remember getting up at five o'clock in the morning. And my special place was my, my our table. We had this big tall table. And I'd go in there and the first thing I had was my Bible. All right? I was up before everybody else was up. And man, I was chewing on it. I was like, all right, Lord, I need some help. I need a brother. So, man, this guy came in my life. We started spending time together. Well, then, guess what? He got me a commentary. Man, I started chewing on this commentary. I'm like, man, that's cool. Man, I can learn from this other dude to learn from the Lord. You know what I mean? I'm learning from these scholars, you know, these guys that are just theologians in the gospel, you know? And I'm just a UTS guy. It's awesome to serve God. It's awesome to spend time with him. That's what he's asking for. Then he said something about 10% of your time. What about 2% of your time? 
I'm guilty. I'm just being real. Do you have that place where you spend time with him? It's just you. Where you take, you take your watch and you just pull it off and you say, I'm not leaving here until I get a word from God. And I'm not leaving here until I can take something to the streets and share it with somebody. I'm not leaving here until I can take it to my job. I'm not leaving here until, God, you give me what I need to get. Until I get the nourishment I need to get so I can serve other people with it. I mean, what's the Word of God mean to us? We've watered it down. We've watered down the relationship with God. That's the most important thing we could ever have. You know, He's never, He's never leaving me in the state. He never has let me down. Never has. This is an unhurried time. This is that time when it's special to you. It's unique to you. It's, it's only your time. You get everything out. The baggage that consumes you. I'm building a house right now. I'll be honest with you. For a week straight, I didn't pick up my Bible anymore. I was so consumed. Well, this builder didn't. He didn't come over on this time. He didn't do this. He didn't do it. And look what's going on in my mind now. I'm consumed by stuff and junk. And all this world is taking over my mind. And before too long, I'm like, I'm not going to read my Bible. I don't even care about people. What? Is that you tonight? What about you serving? Is that you tonight? Guys, that time's got to be personal. It's not you and your wife. My wife and I don't have the same quiet time. My wife gets up. She's plugged in. You know why I know? She's growing. You know why I know? She's serving. You know why I know? She's fighting sin. She's battling. I love watching my wife pray. I love watching her. I love watching her serve. It's incredible. You might be asking the question, how can I apply this? You might be asking the question, how can I teach it? You might be asking the question, how can I share it? That might be some questions on your mind. And this is questions on my mind at first. And the first thing I had to do is I had to get a personal, intimate relationship, and I had to know what I know. That makes sense? I had to know what I know. I had to get in it. I had to dig in it. I had to chew on it. And then I had to know it. And once I got it, the first person who came in trouble, everybody contacted me, was in trouble. All right? That's just a challenge. That's how you can apply it, though. You know, it's your word personal to you, to where you share it. Because I'm telling you right now, that first person that gets saved, woo! that first person, wherever your job's at, that first person that had you answer, you maybe you just answer a question, or maybe it's not even that, just tell me you love them. Flip your world upside down. Because I guess what? Remember he said that 10% of the time? Maybe it's 2%? But guess what that does? It starts increasing. You start saying, God, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. One of my friends the other day said, man, you think about God every hour? I'm like, absolutely. But I didn't before. But it became a hunger and thirst after righteousness, right? That's what got exciting. Undistracted time. It's a killer. Guys, undistracted time. And I'm preaching to myself. This is something I'm teaching in my own life. I'm teaching my kids and my wife. Undistracted time. I have to get up early. Just to be honest with you, I have to get up early. Sometimes it's a struggle for me. I'm not a late night guy. I've got to get my sleep. I push it all day long. But it's undistracted time, guys, that gets us. I believe that. I believe the undistracted time in your life is getting you right now, where you're at. Man, I want to move on to the next point. I want to, I want to get to the end of That's what I want. Guys, let's turn to Philippians chapter 4. If you have a Bible, Philippians chapter 4, 4 through 9. Guys, i got a cool story for you while you're looking at that. I wasn't going to say this. It's not in my notes, but I had a guy that uh, really encouraged me in the beginning of my relationship. And all he said to me was, you know, the guy had a plan. And I'm telling you right now, he was right. And, and when he said this to me, though, I had to, see, I had to seek some guidance. I had to go and I had to take the next step of my life. Maybe that's the step that you need to deny, but I took the next step, and that next step turned into me having a relationship with my Bible. Okay? Well, that Bible became my best friend. And when that Bible became my best friend, this passage right here is the antidote to my success. Okay? So I'm teaching you right now the snake bite that I had, the sin issues I had in my life. This is it. This is the key. Okay? We're going to go through some of the keys here. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 9. All right, we're going to dig into it. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, 
But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. We're going to say it 8 and 9, okay? We're going to start there. In order to have a fire in our belly, we must take time to rejoice in the Lord. You see, Paul's in prison here, and Paul is shouting out. He's saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. How easy is that to do that? I mean, you think about it for a second. It's hard to say, you know what? I'm so happy doing what I'm doing right now. Sometimes. See, it's the 80-20 mentality. See, there's 80% positive in your life at all times. I believe that. And there's 20% negative. And guess what we dwell on? We dwell on the 20. We dwell on it. It consumes us. And it causes anxiety issues. And it causes spread. And then we medicate it, right? So you've got to take time to rejoice in the Lord. Next one, you must take time to pray. I mean, he teaches us this here, you know. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men the Lord's hand. Be anxious for nothing. You know, that was me. I was anxious for everything. And it's easy to creep back in. It's easy for that to creep back in for me. And so I've got to guard myself there. And we're going to see right here where he tells us how to guard ourselves. Right? So it says, but this is the key to that part right there. Verse 6, if you look at that, be anxious for nothing. That's worry, fret. Okay? There's some of us in here that have that issue, isn't it? Worry, fret, anxiety. We're struggling with that. And he says this, but. I love that word when it comes up. But there's a but. So this means that here, he's going to put something here that will help you if you accept it, if you take it. Okay? So here we go. But in everything. That's a big word. That's everything. That's all. Everything by prayer. You can just stop there. So he starts there. But everything in prayer. Everything. And I remember Rick one time uh, told the story that he didn't pray when he bought his uh, washing machine. And that joker went down in like two days or something. I don't remember the whole story, but it went down. You know what I mean? He's like, I should have prayed over that thing. And he didn't. But it's, just, it's, it's simple. The little things in life. You know what I mean? God cares. He cares about the little things. I got story after story. You know, in our, in our, in our Bible study we have on Sunday mornings, uh, almost every week I say, hey, what are you grateful for today? Let's just go around the room and say something we're grateful for. You know, and, and, and every time they've got something. Every time you got something. Every time I got something. You know, and instead of having to go to a pity party and feeling sorry for yourself, why don't we say, you know what, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful to have this breath. And I'm grateful to have my eyesight. I'm grateful to have my legs. I'm grateful to have this. You could go all day and thank you for stuff. I promise you. Try it. See what happens in your life. It changed my life when I started thanking God. But it says everything, but everything in prayer. You know, maybe prayer to you right now is just a checklist. Thank you, Lord. Mom, thank you. Kids. <coughs> checklist. Don't you guys, maybe you just got a checklist. Maybe it's a box over. You know, maybe it's a box over. Oh, Lord, if you bless me this time, I promise you I'll, I'll do whatever you say next time. You know, I don't know what it is. You know, he's saying, come to me right here and get on your knees and trust me, pray to me, and bring everything to the table. You know, this is the greatest insurance policy on in the world. You know that song we sing? Hope. Put it on hope. Greatest insurance policy in the world. Pray for everything. Supplication means come to God earnestly and humbly. Thanksgiving, expressing the expression of gratitude. And your request there is asking God. Three simple things right there that you can apply. You must consider His greatness. That's the next point. Consider His greatness. You know, verse 7 there, it says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Now listen, I can only teach what I know. Okay? And preaching is just reminding. Okay? So I'm going to remind you about my life. And it was a wreck. And I had no peace. Okay? And now I'm standing up here. That's awesome. Okay? It's awesome to my family. But I'm telling you right now, it's no different for me than it is for you. But this is the cool thing is we have a holy God who wants a personal, intimate relationship with just you. Okay? It's incredible. Uh, probably going to jump ahead here a little bit, but man, in the Old Testament I got to think about King David. Man, King David, man, he was a man after God's own heart. He failed. And then what he did in Psalms 51, he said, create me a pure heart of God. Renew my spirit. You know, and he's won that, that personal, that intimacy back. You know, he's won it back. He's craving it. You know, he's like, please, God, please. He's begging God. See, that's, that's the antidote right there is, guess what? 
there's a holy God and we're all going to be judged for what we do personally. But there's an altar. It's not these wooden things here. But these, these are just an example that we can get on our knees before a holy, righteous God right now or in our house or wherever we're at and say, God, I want to be used today. See, there's no difference between me and you. It's just I ask God to use me. I just asked him to use me. And then it was incredible what the next step was in my life. I mean, I can't, I want to pinch myself sometimes, you know? But it's awesome when you see how holy God, in the Old Testament, I was talking about David, but these, these scribes and these guys, when they would write things down, you know, when they got to the name Yahweh, okay, when they got to that name, they would, they would change pins because that name was holy to them. How, how holy is the name God to you? How holy is the name Jesus to you? You know, maybe you're sitting here like, I'm very uncomfortable right now, Mike. Very uncomfortable because I don't know all about this Jesus and I don't know about this God, but I'm telling you right now, I'm a little nervous. And that's okay. I expect that. But I'm telling you right now, this is what changed my life and all the other people around you that are changed. There's no other answer than the name of Jesus. Amen. I trusted Him. I started reading His Word. I started applying it. I started teaching it. I started sharing it. And guess what happened? Flip my world upside down. And not just me, my family too. He is big enough. Whatever you've got going on right now, He's big enough to take care of you. Okay, I was telling a couple earlier, they probably left, but I was telling a couple earlier, I was like, man, if you know, we were in Omaha and we had this missions pastor and this waitress came up and she, uh, First time he's like, he was wanting someone to witness to him, you know, that's what he's going to do. But first time she came up, nothing happened. The second time he said, Hey, he said, if, uh, if you can have a miracle happen in your life, what would it be? I don't remember what she answered. He said, Well, do you think God's going to do that? You know, when you talk about the stone being rolled away, man, I think about that in our lives. You know, we've got this big old nasty festering thing in our life with sin and with ethic. And we're, we're massaging it. It's in the closet sometimes. And people say, man, it looks good on the outside. But it's not good on the inside. They don't know that. But they're, you're pending. It's festering. It's festering. It's getting ready to pop. You know? This is it. The altar. The place of sacrifice. They learned it. You know? We can learn it. We can learn these things. You know, Paul is in prison saying, rejoice. You know, maybe you're in prison. In your heart right now. I was. 2008, 2000, I was a mess. Prison myself. My heart was in prison. Because of me. Because I was selfish. Finally, I want to get this because I know we're running out of time. Finally, you must meditate on these things. Okay? Verse 8 and 9 over here. Flip my world upside down when I start applying these things in my life. Let's look at it. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report. If there's anything virtuous, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Okay? Guys, our meditation, it's not near close to what God, I believe God in my life, especially right now, what God wants me to be. You know, chewing on the Word and hungering and thirsting after it and plugging in with other ministries and fighting the fight. You know what I mean? And seeing the soul saved. That's why we're here. It's incredible to watch people grow in Christ. So, I want to go to the first one here. And uh, the truth. What's the truth mean to you? See, I had to do an evaluation of myself again. I told you again to evaluate myself. I had to evaluate what's truth in my life. And one of the biggest truths I had to realize was I'm not taking any of this stuff with me when I leave this earth. I was consumed with stuff. Maybe that's you. I don't know. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's something. But I, the truth was is that none of this stuff's going with you. You're not going to take it with you. That motivated me to fight the fight. Meditate on, meditate in the truth found in Christ. Okay, that's Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty. So it says, "But that, but that is not the way you learn Christ." Assuming that you have heard about Him and were taught in Him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. And that's an awesome verse. Man, put off the old self. You know, he's talking about crucifying Himself on the cross. 
This is the next step for non-Christians. If you're a non-Christian and the Holy Spirit is putting a smack down on you right now and saying, you know what? You're not you're going to the devil's hell. You're going to the devil's hell. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make the cut. But you can. You can surrender yourself to Jesus Christ. You can sacrifice, you can put yourself on that cross. Alright? And trust Jesus by faith that He is enough. He's big enough to do it. The cross was enough. Meditate. Meditate for the truth found in the Holy Spirit looks like this. John 16, 13. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority. But whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. He's teaching you. See, that's the cool thing. What I learned was, you know, I was born with dyslexia. Uh, had a few issues with that learning. But guess what? I started digging in my Word. God started teaching me through His Holy Spirit. Then I had no excuse. Guess what? We make excuses for everything. You know, I said that earlier. But, but God started teaching me through the Holy Spirit. He started guiding me through Scripture. Man, He started teaching me how to read. You know what I mean? He started teaching me how to dig into my Word, how to cross reference. That's when it got so excited. I started getting up. I read a verse. I was like, I'm going to cross reference that for the next one. And then before too long, I'm two hours into it. I've already put my watch down. You know what I mean? That's when I got excited to get into it. But then the meditation changed. My, the things, you know, like Paul. You remember Paul on the road to Damascus had those shackles come over him? That represents the sin. Those things started just falling off me like shackles. The sin issues. You know, lust, pornography. You know, all these issues that I had in my life started falling off. I started stepping through them. I'm like, there's a faith builder. There ain't, I never thought I'd get over that again. I never thought I'd get over that. I started stepping through it. Meditation. See, I started getting over it. Guess what it did? It built me up. I started getting stronger, spiritually stronger. It's awesome. Awesome how it works. Meditation, he, he says this. Meditate on what's noble. You know, so we got the truth. We got noble. We got what's just, we got what's pure, we got what's lovely, and a good rapport. You know, these things you can look up on your own. We don't have time. These are things, and guess what? Men, women, we've got to apply these things to our life. Okay, listen, if you don't learn nothing else from this, sit down, write those out, figure out what they mean, and start applying them. See what happens to you. I challenge you to do that. If you do that, it'll flip your world upside down, I promise you. Because guess what? The truth can only be found in the Word of God. That's what's mine. And guess who teaches you? It's not man. It's the Holy Spirit. So now you don't have to look at man and say, well, if I have someone to teach me, I can learn everything I need if I have a teacher. No, you don't. You've got the best teacher. Right. The Holy Spirit's your guide. He directs you through Scripture. There's no excuse here. You've got to dig in. You've got to trust God. And He will do it. I mean, all these things I start applying. What's noble to you? What's just to you? What's pure to you? What's lovely? What's a good report to you? You know, I saw this piece, or I saw this, uh, this quote, I'm going to go on, let's go into verse 9, because if you apply these to your life, this is what's going to happen. You, first of all, you're going to be fired up for the gospel. I promise you. Because the sin issues that you had for so long are going to be gone. You've got to apply them, though, because this is what he teaches. Look at number 9 here. Verse 9. The things which you learn. Here we go. You've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And guess what? The God of peace will be with you. It's a promise. It's a promise. This ain't my promise. I'll let you down. I promise you. I mean, this is the way it is. This is a promise that won't let you down. How awesome is that? But it's by faith. What do you have faith in tonight? What do you have faith in tonight? Because... You know, earlier we were talking about, you know, relationship. And so I, I want to kind of end with this, you know. My wife, I love my wife. When I was first dating my wife, I spent time with her. Because what happened, what, what would happen if I just went over and sat down with her and said, Well, uh, how are you doing today? Okay, good. All right, see you later. Have a nice day. She's been out like a trout. She's been out. Gone. All right? But you know what I did? sat down with her I got to know her. I spent hours. How many, how many of you spent hours on the phone and before two hours like start at five o'clock and at midnight you're like, whoa, where'd the time go? You know, that's just the way it is. Time flies by. But 
time of your life is flying by. It's flying by. The time of my life is flying by. But I'm telling you right now, my wife is valuable to me, and I make time for her. I have to make time sometimes for her. She's valuable to me. What are you making time for? What are you making time for? Tonight, the altars are open for you. Hey, listen, there's no one perfect in here. You're not going to make me happy by coming down here. You're not going to, it's not to please me. It's to please the Holy God. I mean, we've got people that are playing games. I know it. I mean, we've got people that aren't going to heed to the words of God. I know that. There's people in here that are probably laughing and saying, this guy's crazy. And that's okay. Because listen, you're going to be accountable for what your actions are. God told me to speak the message. And I'm just up here being obedient. I'm not the greatest speaker. But guess what? I want to be used by God. Do you? Can you trust the Holy God to get rid of the baggage and jump in your life? It's by faith. Guess what? You come to Him on your knees. No matter who you're sitting by, it doesn't matter. Put the blinders on. And you get, get on your knees before the Holy God. That's the, that's the call to action. I'm calling you to make this evaluation out of your life. On your knees. I'm calling you... If you're, a, if you're a worker, if you're, if you're not a worker, if you're just here for the first time and you want to trust God, and, and maybe you don't know what salvation means, but you got questions, we got people who are going to be down here to help you out. Okay? we got people standing right over there. Go find one. Humble yourself. Okay? Humble yourself and say, you know what? I'm not going to leave until I understand it. And I'm okay with it. I'll stay till whatever time we have to stay. I'll just put it that way. I'll stay long as you stay. Because your soul is worth it. If you don't have peace tonight, tonight you can have peace. That's the key to this, this, this passage here. It's a promise. It's a promise that you can have peace. Alright? The worship team is going to come up. I want to read a quote about peace. It says, The peace that Jesus gives is not the absence of trouble, but is rather the confidence that He is there with you always. But that is good to know. He's with you always. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. If you don't have that peace in your life, Today's the day of salvation. You can trust the Holy God. Alright? If you just need to do business with God, if you're a worker, and you're like, man, I don't have no joy, I don't have no fire, I don't have no fire anymore. I don't the word of God is not as valuable as it used to be. Guess what? Starting point. Starting point right here on your knees. Why don't you be the first leader that comes up here? Why don't you be the first one that comes up and says, you know what? I did an evaluation through your message, Mike, and I'm ready to change my life. I'm ready to make a difference. All right? You don't have to be the same. You can leave it different. But it's not on my shoulders, it's on yours. Who's going to be the first one that's brave and says, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of That's the call, guys. Come as you are.